Holy shit. Well, as you just saw there, giant white-tailed ducks can rattle the nerves of even the most seasoned trophy hunters. And that's just one of the many reasons why we keep coming back year after year. I've been deer hunting in Mexico every year since 1982. And I'll confess that I look forward to the next season with just as much excitement as the first time I ever crossed the Rio Grande River. Let's take a look at some of the bucks that we found during the 2021-2022 season. I think you'll understand why. I like this stud here. He's a seven-year-old. And we've been watching him since he was three. Even at three years old, it was obvious he was special. And he has it all here now. He's got a beautiful 10-point frame, nice width, good mass and beams, and a few kickers and forks that just add to the character. <laughs> look at that. It's fairly common understanding that whitetail bucks generally look bigger when they're walking away from you. I think in this buck's case, he looks pretty impressive from almost every angle. That's the stuff of dreams there. We've been managing this ranch since the late 1990s. We've been doing things like expanding the water system as much as possible by running PVC pipe and putting water troughs every kilometer or so. Digging small tanks or water troughs where the uh, terrain allowed for it because water is so extremely important in this country. You know, it's a very dry, arid country and water makes all the difference in the world. We've also been adding supplemental feeding stations and feed high protein pellets year round. But we also let the very best books fully mature, preferably to eight years old or older before they're ever hunted. For example, this beautiful 10 point is a, a six-year-old. We first noticed him last year, gorgeous buck, thought he had a lot of trophy potential, so he gets a pass for at least one, but probably two or three more years before we actively hunt him. With all of these elements coming together, the ranch is incomparable to what we started with over 20 years ago. When I first started on this ranch, the biggest buck I could find was a 150-inch 10-point, and there weren't very many of them. So this is what we've accomplished with all native deer on a large ranch in the vast brush country of northern uh, Mexico along the Rio Grande River. Now, how about this guy? Another interesting thing about him, this deer had a beautiful drop tine on his left side last year. He was a nine point with a big drop. Sometimes the drops come, sometimes they go. In this case, he lost the drop, but he's still quite beautiful. Not fully mature yet, but uh, can't wait to see if he gets the drop back and what'll happen with him. Exciting to watch these deer grow up over time. Well, we looked at some 10 points. So why don't we take a look at a few eight points? Everybody likes a big eight point. This guy's kind of cool. He's pretty wide. It's neat how his tines pitch forward. I suspect they're much longer than they appear from his straight head on view. Got a unique shape. He's quite striking head on. Good looking deer. I'll keep crawling on my butt. I'm getting closer as long as he'll let me. Oops. I'm telling you, there's something up in the brush there that's got him all jiggered up. I don't know what it is. He sees me, but that'll look pretty cumbersome. So I don't think he's too worried about me. But he's flat interested in whatever's in the brush. Oh, like the look and wave you too. Let's see what he looks like he's about to. How about this guy? He may be 30 inches wider or wider inside spread. While we've grown a number of 200 inch plus deer over the years, bucks 30 inches wide or wider, eh, they're much more rare. And this fellow's only a four year old. Gotta be interesting to see him grow up.
to me, this is the classic eight point look. Kind of a round rack, tines sort of bend in a little bit. Just a beautiful buck. On this particular morning, he just sort of materialized out of the fog. You couldn't see very far. It's so thick. You know, sometimes you get days down in the brush country, you can't see 50 yards. And he just sort of materialized out of the fog, stood there for a minute or two, and then kind of disappeared off into the brush. Cool scene. We do a lot of spot and stalk hunting on the ranch, and this scene is all too common. You spend about half the morning trying to sneak into position and get in range, and by the time you finally get close enough, you're busted, <laughs> and it's over in seconds. To me, one of the neat things about whitetail antlers is the tremendous variety of shapes and sizes and configurations. I mean, you got typical racks, and then you got forks and kickers and non-typicals and drop tines and ten points and eight points. It goes on and on. This guy's kind of unique, got bladed main beams. He could make some lucky hunter a great memory one day. Then there's just a straight up beautiful 10 point like this. How cool. A magnificent white tail drifting across the edge of a grass pasture right at dark. How many hunters go out every year just for the chance of a scene like this? It is interesting to see how one year differs from the next with the deer. There's so many variables involved, from weather during the summer to thawing crops in the previous years. Just lots of different things affect what we see during the season. One thing we noticed this year was there was a robust crop of great looking four-year-olds and some five-year-olds as well. Many of them looked very similar and it was certainly encouraging for the future potential and pipeline to come. Here are a couple of examples. Also, that age class ruts really hard, and this year's rut was one of the best we've had in years. It was extremely exciting to be out during the rut. This obviously isn't one of those four-year-olds. Look at that skin under his chin. I'm not sure how old he is, but it's safe to say that he's very mature. A beautiful buck. This video is actually a bit of a disappointment for me. This is a super cool seven or eight year old, probably in the mid 170s. He's a mainframe 10 point with a drop on his left and his right main beam kind of curls and then turns straight down so that head on he looks like he's a double drop time buck. Really cool look. I tried all season to get close to him unsuccessfully and unfortunately this is the best I got. This neat looking drop tine buck was on the other side of a protein feeder pin and my tripod wouldn't raise high enough to capture the video. So I'm actually hand holding the camera. <laughs> That's why it's shaking. I'd seen him a couple of times earlier in the season, but this is the only opportunity all season long I had to capture him on video. There were a couple of different hunters we tried to get on this particular buck during the season, but as so often happens, he was a no-show when anyone with a gun would show up. He seemed to be able to tell the difference between a Winchester 270 and a Canon XA30. They're smart like that. Have you ever wondered how loud you should rattle? Or how long you should rattle? Well, I'm going to turn the mic off and just let this thing speak for itself.
Obviously, from all this video, I spend a lot of time on the ranch during the winter. And like many, I have my favorite spots to hang out. What's interesting and informative about this video is that it's now almost February, very late January. I've been hunting for the better part of two and a half months, and this is a location I watch almost daily. Yet this is the first and only time I saw this buck all year. He's highly identifiable, and it just goes to show how secretive some bucks can be. That said, he's a stud four-year-old, and I certainly hope to see him again in future years. And here's another buck that I hope to see again in future years. This I believe to be a three-year-old, and he's a beautiful young 12-point. <laughs> I can't wait to see him again in the future. This buck is a legend on our ranch. We call him Captain Hook, and he's a 13-year-old here. We've watched and filmed him since he was four, and he's been big every year, frequently in the 190s and even cracked 200 some. Here is where he could be seen regularly on what we call Hook Hill. Yep, he had his own hill named after him, and that was his home. Now, here he is the year before. It's 12. He's broken a couple of drop times off, but we thought he might break 200 there, even as a 12-year-old. A legend for us. I said it earlier in the video, but this is the look you get to see so often. You go sneaking through the cactus and the thorn brush, lugging your camera and on a tripod, and you got binoculars and sometimes even a gun. You crawl out to the edge of the sendero on your hands and knees, trying to be as stealthy as you can, ease your camera into position and look up, and yep, he's got you pegged. And you know, this isn't going to last long. Game over. I included this video clip for a couple of reasons. Obviously, he's a nice looking buck. But look at his body condition. This video was taken early in the season and this buck is in prime physical shape. A mature stud ready for the rigors of the rut. Yep, here we go again. Stare down. He wins, you lose. End of story. I thought this would be a good buck to end this year's video on. He's everything any hunter could possibly hope for. Last year, he was right at 200 inches. This season, he broke his right G4 off in velvet, but he's still a stud in every way. We believe him to be a six-year-old and have watched him for several years now. And with any luck at all, I'll start next year's video with him right on the front. You can bet lots of eyes will be looking for him. So stay tuned, and with any luck at all, I'll be back with video from the upcoming 2022-23 season. Enjoy, y'all.